I'm sure some folks will still participate in politics, hoping they can find a benevolent ruler to at least mitigate uh, some of the infringements in place now. But guys, that's, that's, that's a road to nowhere. It's a road to beatdowns on the street, extortion, and democide with an even greater loss of freedom year after year, election after election. And it's, it's one of the most vicious falsehoods perpetuated throughout the ages. Uh, you know, that the, the uh, naive notion that politics can set you free. Uh, and that's why I've been so harsh on the anti-libertarian libertarian party, uh, because, uh, as I've said before, the people are sick of politics, the left-right paradigm. So what do they do? They give them more politics. It's, uh, it's the most uh, uh, insincere and ingenuine thing you can do to a fellow human being. It really is dangerous to be an anarchist, and it, it will only get, I mean, it, you know, as per kind of the, the stages of Agoras and that Konkin kind of laid out, it, it's, it's going to get worse, and then it's going to get better, but, you know, when, when's it, when's it going to start getting better? You're listening to Liberty Under Attack Radio, and now your host, Shane. All right, and welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio. we got a little Patreon exclusive here for you. I've got uh, my co-host Jason Paradise with me. And uh, we need to, Jason, we need to get back to recording normal episodes, but things have been a little crazy, uh, as uh, you know, as, as has been the, been the case for at least the last few weeks. Uh, so uh, how's it going, man? Pretty good, man. Going pretty good. I, I guess the best it, it could be still living under a fucking um, a terrorist regime. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not fun to live under a terrorist regime, is it? Yeah, uh, uh, United States number one. Uh, United States government number one terrorist in the world. ISIS ain't, get, ain't, ain't got shit on the Western governments. Jesus nah. Christ, no, not even close. It's like, nah, a, it's like a street gang compared to, to to the U.S. government. Actually, it may be a sub uh, a sub branch of the United States government. I don't know. I believe I heard John McCain say one time he was bragging about how well he knew ISIS. So, um, yeah, oh. thank you for that. Oh, he knows him well. Yeah, yeah <laughs> he he definitely knows him well. Uh, may he, uh, you know, die not in peace. Uh, <clears throat> may his brain wither away. Uh, I, I've I've said that to 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 family so. members and they thought I was a dick. And I was like, Yo. are you kidding me? Like I can't wish this man to you know you know for for his brain to wither wither away and have him you know die miserably. Do you know all the all of the innocent people that have been murdered, you know, by his policies? Mm -hmm. Shut up. Mm -hmm. No, I, I you know I'm I'm more than more than okay. Um, there's nothing immoral about wishing that on somebody. Right. Well, uh, I I ended up receiving private messages over that. So uh, it was actually from uh, my best friend's dad, and he's like, hey, now he goes, I like some of the things you post, but. Maybe you're going over the top, and I was it like, "It couldn't have happened to a better person." That's exactly, and I said, "I'm not wishing cancer on him. I'm just wishing death." Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's like, you know, one more, one more, uh, one more parasitical, uh, you know, uh, mass murder, uh, you know, gone. And obviously, you know, it's by proxy. Sure, you know, uh, technically, he didn't put his hands on anyone's throat and choke him out, or he didn't put a gun to someone's head, or he didn't push the button on the drone, or or whatever. But but still, it's his policies that uh, his his warmongering has caused so much, uh, you know, destruction over. Uh, in the Middle East, upon and some people, uh, but uh, it's kind of like uh, when I was uh, we, were, we were down at the ground once. And I'm not going to you know drop any names here, but uh, I was uh, we got in kind of this conversation about uh, this. This would have been last end of last year at some point, and and I mentioned something like you know like you really like you really want more innocent, innocent people to be, be killed in the Middle East. And one of the per one of the people said, uh, "Well, why do you care?" It's like because they're human. Wow. Beings. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, like. What? <laughs> Why do I care? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. Who cares that they kill you, babies? You know, you know who? Yeah, you know whose taxpayers are? You, you know what? Uh, you know who's? Uh, you know, helping foot that bill? Unfortunately, yeah. You know, unfortunately, me, you, him. Yeah, that's it's. There's uh yeah, it's it's unfortunate. It's uh, really unfortunate. But uh, so is uh, the state of survival society, where uh, you know, uh, <laughs> where war is not, where war is peace. And uh, where taxation is, uh, you know, uh, voluntary donations, and it's just also backwards. Uh, but uh, I guess we really can't be surprised, right? Uh, <laughs> Double I, think. Gosh, war, war is peace. Oh. Uh, hate is love. Uh, <laughs> ignorance is bliss, right? Yeah, rape, rape is love making. <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know what? I was thinking about John McCain. He, he was in the military. I'm. He yeah. He wasn't involved in uh, drone strikes, but there's a good chance he could have been involved with uh, um, actually killing some people. Uh, he's, a, the, he's a very good. He's a very good contender for you know the uh, the Manchurian candidate. You know he yeah. was over there tortured. Like you know it, you know maybe it, you know hey you know conspiracy theory of the day. You know maybe it was actually the United States government who took him in. You know and planted a chip in his brain. Uh, and then said, "Hey, you're gonna be our little, uh, you're gonna be our guy to go out and advocate all these terrible things, and you know, go meet with the leaders of ISIS and all of this stuff." Uh, and why the hell are this thing John McCain to meet with those folks? I mean, they're probably better diplomats that they have than John McCain, the blubbering dumbass. But uh, right. Well, what I mean, he, well, hey, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe it's better that he went out there because he was an idiot. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah, he's a puppet. Definitely a puppet. But yeah, he. Did, do you know? Did you know that he was a uh, Almost went to prison for treason. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, do you remember when Donald Trump made that statement um, that he was? Uh, oh, real r real men don't get captured. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering how the right wingers were going to take that, but uh, yeah, he um, he was getting ready to go to prison for treason because uh, why he was actually a prisoner. The things that he told. Um, told the enemy why he was captured uh they they were viewing it as treason and then he actually had to get a presidential pardon really really yeah. okay yeah I, w I wasn't aware of that oh that's so they, they'll throw john mccain under the fucking bus too holy hell so like uh, you you'd imagine there'd be a point where you like you're getting you're, like you're getting i mean you know john mccain still is as as you know as good as you know as good as he could look I mean, he doesn't look like he was, uh, you know, maimed. He didn't have any, you know, fingers or legs cut off. Uh, I mean, we, we don't really see any, you know, torch scars from burning. Uh, so, you know, they, they must have treated him, you know, uh, you know, uh, I guess maybe maybe fairly well. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever. But the, the point is, you know, there, there's got to be a point where, uh, where you know, when you, uh, when you really, when you reveal that information that, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, okay, yeah, you know, if I was going through that, I'd probably be doing the same thing. Uh, but apparently not. Apparently, the state just says, uh, you know, well, the state, the state generally protects their own. But yeah, the fact that he needed a presidential pardon for that is uh, a little surprising. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm looking up the uh, the fact checker on this, and here's what the claim is. Is it Snopes? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Snopes. Snopes said it was. They said it was false. Here, rumors that the Arizona senator admitted that he was a war criminal. And that was pardoned by President Nixon for his crimes are not true. Hold on. And it's so, no. I don't. It I don't snow, think so. he. I don't think he ever admitted it. All right. The origin. Sorry, you feeding us disinformation, Jason. Hold on. <laughs> uh, Wallace. People know McCain says uh, Wallace, uh, the old reporter. People who know McCain's. Well, says he can hold a grudge. He also has a legendary temper. But if McCain can be hard on his friends, he's even harder on his enemies. He can be, he can also be very hard on himself. Senator McCain, I made a serious, serious mistakes. I made serious, serious mistakes and did nothing wrong when I was in prison. Okay, what did you do wrong in prison? I wrote a confession. I was guilty of war crimes against the Vietnamese people. I intentionally bombed women and children. And you did that because you were being tortured and you reached reached the end of the line? Yes, but I should have gone further. I should have never believed I would. I should never believe that I would, that I would break and did. So, um... I oh, guess that's oh, so so he just so he was un under duress. He admitted to war crimes. It sounds like uh, sounds like an episode of Twenty Four. Uh, I think it was uh, what was uh, oh, I don't remember that. I don't remember the name. It's been a while since I watched the show. Uh, what the hell is his name? <clears throat> one of the one of the presidents that happened to him. He got he got uh, he got uh, kidnapped and he he was forced to do a tell. He was forced to sign a confession and uh, do a uh, you know live uh, broadcast. Uh, you know, uh, admitting to war crimes. So. Uh, you know, fiction doesn't always uh, fiction doesn't always remain fiction. It's typically based off of uh, off of uh, you know real life events. So that that's that's interesting. Interesting. Okay. okay so uh, I'm reading a little more here. So maybe he didn't actually receive a presidential pardon, and that I guess he was just confessing to. Uh, I believe the reporter was Mike Wallace. Uh, oh, okay. They have a, they have an actual photo here of um, 
of the propaganda. It's uh, John McCain shaking uh, Richard Nixon's hand. So maybe the, a pardon didn't go on, but um, yeah, John McCain feels that he made serious mistakes and 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 told the truth. <laughs> why he was being <laughs> Yeah, it's not often you tell the truth. Well, yeah, it's not often you uh, tell the truth when you're under duress. Well, yeah, I guess it's, especially when it comes to those sorts of things, because uh, obviously they don't see themselves as doing anything wrong. They see themselves as, uh, you know, being the policemen of the world, the spreaders of democracy. Uh, you know, even though you know, like, uh, you know, spreading democracy doesn't does not equal you know depleted uranium, uh, using depleted uranium rounds in the Middle East. But uh, wow, wow, okay. Was it worth it? Yeah, was it worth it? I don't know. I don't know if you've seen that uh, Madeleine Albright interview. Oh yeah, it. yeah, the five hundred thousand, yeah, the uh, sanctions, uh, the sanctions in Iraq or Afghanistan. I can never remember the. It was the, Iraq. Iraq, yeah, uh, five hundred thousand people died, you know, from the sanctions placed upon upon Iraq. Do you, do you think it's worth it? I think the price was worth it. The uh, biggest, yeah. I, and I, I don't say this word lightly, but she's a fucking cunt. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it 500, was 500,000 not... children's deaths, they're worth it for to to, to further United States interests. Right. You know, that's it's no wonder these people are in favor of abortion. I mean, you know, like that's that's uh <laughs> And see that that's also too. That's also too and not not to not to get too deeply into this, but you you consider that, you know, the obviously like the, there's no life is uh is 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 is, is uh, I guess valuable to to the to these lunatics. Uh so when when the state is pushing uh, some sort of, you know, health initiative, uh, such as vaccines, I think it's really naive for people to actually believe that, uh, you know, the state will have their best interests at heart. I think that's the, 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 the most naive notion that you can have when you consider that even, you know, 500,000 children, you know, that's worth it to further United States interests. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's disconcerting, to say the least. It was worth it. It oh, was worth shit. it. Well, that was a good start to a Patreon exclusive. Now I'm pissed off. That's good. Yeah, yeah let's um, let, let's break into the subject, man. I got to get this this sh shit off my chest. Get on the record. All right, so so last night, uh, this is being recorded on September 14th, so this would have been uh, last night's recording, September 13th, of the Vanu podcast. I uh, had a guest host, Jason Booth, on. It was a terrific, uh, terrific discussion uh, for, for a lot of reasons. He's, uh, you know, very, uh, very keen on Vanu, so that definitely helped, but... Furthermore, he actually, uh, you know, lived out in the Siskiyou region uh, where uh, Rayo and uh, Roberta, you know, did their uh, did their uh, wilderness Vanu. So last night we got a, a bunch of really interesting insights, uh, especially on the geography, I guess kind of the history of the area. And I got, really, got some really good uh, information on why, you know, Rayo chose the spot because he did it very deliberately. He didn't do anything. Uh, you know, off on a whim. Uh, he definitely did. And there, there's, there's a, a chapter in uh, Vanu Book 1, uh, Vanu the Search for Personal Freedom, which you can get at tinyurl.com forward slash Vanu Rayo. And uh, it's a chapter called A Survey, on, a Survey of the Siski Region. And he goes through all of this stuff of, uh, you know, why, you know, I guess the benefits of this region and kind of some of the things that you'd have to defend against, uh, you know, uh, in a survivalist, uh, survivalism standpoint, from a survivalism standpoint. So, uh, you know, Rayo chose, chose this area for a very good reason. And, uh, you know, Jason and I were talking about recording this Patreon exclusive, and I, I told him about that uh, last night's episode, and he said, oh, man, I'm familiar with that area, too. And I said, hell, okay, well, uh, tell me about it. So he, he kind of gave me a little run-through, and I said, okay, well, let's uh, re record a Patreon exclusive on this, because uh, not only is it, you know, valuable insight on the region, but uh, there's a nice little story here that I don't think a lot of uh, folks have heard uh, about what Jason did in his past, victimless crime breaker. Uh <laughs> <laughs> or victimless crime, uh, whatever, whatever. Uh, so, so Jason, let's, let's go ahead and get into it. I guess, uh, I guess, uh, start us at the beginning. Okay. Um, well, I ended up making a trip, um, up the, to the Emerald Triangle. Um, if anybody's familiar with the Emerald Triangle, it's, uh, pretty much a hot spot for, uh, cannabis. And, and, uh, and, and that, that would be, uh, Humboldt County, I mean, it's I mean, it's to, yeah, go for it. Uh, Min oh man, it's a hard name to pronounce. Like Mendocino or something? Mendocino. 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 Uh, and I believe the other county is Sonoma, Sonoma County, but the there's three three counties up there in um, in Northern California where it's pretty much like uh, the mecca of of 
cannabis. It's it's where, um, you know, probably ninety percent of 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 I, well, then that might be an exaggeration, but a lot, a lot of of cannabis comes out from uh, from that area. And, that, and that's that's what that's what Jason Booth said too. He said, you know, the majority of recreational and uh, even medical cannabis comes from uh, the Emerald Triangle. So like they, like we're, we're <laughs> so so when you say nine percent, you're probably like that's not really that's not really an exaggeration. I wouldn't say that's an exaggeration. I mean, the, to 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 get the point across, there's a lot of cannabis in that area. Yeah, well, there there's a special reason why. Uh, the reason behind it is because the climate and the altitude are are almost perfect. There's two places around the world that is the best place to grow marijuana. Number one is Afghanistan, and number two is the Emerald Triangle up there in California. Uh, marijuana loves high altitude, and they have just the right climate up there in Northern California to 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 grow the best bud. Uh, a lot of a lot of the bud that's grown in bulk, um, you would think would be indoor, but when you see the stuff that they're growing out outdoor, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, we're talking about plants that weigh anywhere from uh, five to ten, upwards of you know, in extreme cases, twelve pounds being harvested off of one plant. Right, and 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 that's what uh, I'll just say, Mr. Booth. Now, not to get confused with Jason's, but uh, he he was saying too, like that marijuana is just so pervasive in that area that, uh, you know, like typically, you you know, uh, like here here in the comedy state of Illinois, you'd see you know cracks in sidewalks and you'd see little weeds growing up out of it. Well, in uh, the Emerald Triangle, there's literal weed <laughs> marijuana growing out of those cracks in the sidewalk. So it's just so pervasive that you know uh, uh, he he kind of said that like growing on the side of the road, like I mean, it's just. It, it's it just it just grows there it spreads <laughs> it's a weed it's a weed and um just to plug ben stone's book uh he, he did uh he did make a a, a short comment about um w one thing you could possibly do is just getting weed to grow wild again because i mean it's a weed so oh yeah yeah as, as a way to combat the drug war yeah whether it's uh opium poppies or weed uh, I mean, if that's if, if if you know drugs are growing so pervasively, I mean, it kind of negates the whole perp like the that they completely you know <laughs> it, it it just uh, you know kind of destroys the war on drugs if it's if it's that available. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, they'll have a hard time definitely uh, stopping it when it becomes so rampant that you know they're ex expending and uh, all these resources and money trying to combat you know a weed so i i, I that's do like that's a uh, that's a cause i could get behind you know what uh, um uh, i guess emerald triangle of the united states or something like <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah i i could definitely get i, I think that would be pretty cool i just to see it everywhere that would be uh that'd be awesome but but anyway so, so yeah, take, take us through the story okay so um i was working a a, a full-time job here in Indiana, working 70 hours a week, and, and one day I just I just went into work and decided to say piss on it, and just um, I walked out. You know, I had a pretty good job. I had a, I had a house, but uh, luckily I was able to sell my house. Actually, while I was out in California, so that was kind of tricky working out the logistics of that. But uh, I got to take a trip to California. I got to spend uh, a month on uh, up in the mountains. And uh, which was pretty cool. So uh, a lot of people don't really get that opportunity. And I actually got to to go and and visit and work on a farm. So, uh, yeah, it's been a pot farm. <laughs> yes, 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 <laughs> yes, a farm. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we weren't uh, we weren't growing almonds. And uh, so, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, the whole experience, because, you know, I'd never really ha I never have really seen a, a pot plant in real life so i thought that was pretty interesting to like actually be standing there with a, a you know maybe a six pound seven pound plant one plant in the ground um yeah they had a, a little over 20 of them there and it, it, it was pretty cool um so it was my first time actually being around a plant and um i got to learn a lot about uh you know uh, the whole harvesting thing. That's the whole reason I went out there is uh, they were paying people during harvest time and they usually, uh, you know, they pay people 200 to $250 a pound to trim during harvest time, which 
So how Please. long is that, like, uh, you know, from someone who doesn't have any information on that, so how long would it take you to trim that um, for that, you know, 200, 250 bucks? Um, it depends on how good you are. I mean, a lot of these kids, uh, right about this, and it's funny that we're talking about this right now because we're getting ready to go into the hot spot. Uh, it usually kicks off around the beginning of October, uh, you know, first, second, first, second week of October is when uh, the actual – People start flooding in to uh, Northern California and uh, just start looking for these trimming jobs. Um, so I would say to 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 do a pound. I mean, if you're really really good, uh, you're trimming anywhere from three quarters of a pound. I mean, if you're really good and you're really on it and working serious days, uh, you might be get over a little over a pound. It just, but for okay. me personally. For me personally, it just wasn't something I was into. I mean, I, uh, I'm a ADHD or you know hyperactive or whatever. And so it, that it's was, really that was very meticulous, tedious work for you then. Yes, yes, but uh, it it still ended. I, I still ended up getting uh, paid by the hour, um, which was cool. Um, of course, you know the bitch about it is they withhold taxes. Really? Okay. Not, so, so no, I was, no, I was gonna say like yeah. I, I don't. Really, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they don't. And and the reason why I'm talking about this is because like you know this happened. Uh, it's been a while. It's it's been it's been longer than uh, five, six, seven years ago. But um, it was just a really cool experience. Like which I think is cool. I mean, it. I don't know. I've never like just to stand there in front of all those plants and, and see that and why we were actually going through the uh the, the portion and i know the federal government already knows there's helicopters in the sky like literally like flying over looking for what was going on and uh you they, they never they never 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 came across uh, the location you were at no yeah they were they were flying like literally there was helicopters over our heads you know, looking at what so they they just they just couldn't see what you were doing, or do they no, no. they knew openly and they just said, "Oh, screw it, whatever." Well, I uh, maybe they're making mental notes for later, but um, you know, uh, we just kept working, and uh, you know, just said, you know, piss on it. We didn't we didn't really care. As, let me let me ask you this question. Um, so how far uh, I, I guess from from like a, the the nearest uh, I guess town. Uh, how far back were you into the woods? Where, like, are you? Are we talking, you know, half a mile, mile, two miles, uh, et cetera? To get to the closest uh, gas station, it was. Well, you're in the mountains, so it's it's about uh, around 40, 45 minutes in the town. Uh, okay. The weird thing about it is we were nestled on private property, which was inside of a, a, a national forest. So that added a whole another level of you know um, you know what are you gonna do when you're done you know but um, it was it, it it was just it was wild it, the only thing I could explain it is I wish it was a reality show uh, you get all these different people from all over the United States coming together you know to work on these farms when it's harvest time and it it's just it's nothing but drama and. A, a lot of places out there in Northern California are starting to be overran by uh, meth because a lot of people have figured out, you know, hey, yeah, you can make pretty good money from growing weed. You know what else you can make even better money on? Meth. So uh, I would say Northern California, they, they really don't have a marijuana problem, especially with how relaxed, you know, local – local police and all that are oh oh yeah uh, yes especially especially in california yeah so so i guess i guess a, a couple more follow-up questions here uh first off were, were you in northern california or were you in like southern oregon and second off <clears throat> well i guess just start with that one okay well it's <clears throat> the emerald triangle um you can you can actually get in there two two different ways you can fly in from uh, sacramento and it's direct it's uh, directly west of it, or you could fly into San Francisco, and it's probably about a three-hour, three-and-a-half-hour drive uh, north of San Francisco, north of the city. But, you know, you go through a couple big cities. There's uh, Santa Rosa, 
uh, which uh, I've, I've stayed in Santa Rosa. It's pretty much like um, a bunch of crackheads in a ghetto there. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's um, it's gorgeous up there. What what was really cool? Um, I was actually there in the fall, and it would get up. You know, it would get up into mid seventies, eighties during the day, and it would drop down to you know uh, fifty, forty at night. But what is really cool is like the coast is like uh, probably about an hour away from there. Um, it always stays like up there in Northern California. It stays about sixty, sixty-five on the coast and foggy. You know, I've been there. You know, different times of the year, and it, it, it's weird. Like in, in the middle of the summer, it it, it could be a hundred degrees up in the mountains, but you drive forty-five minutes to an hour to the coast, and it's like sixty, sixty-five, and foggy. Like you rarely get a get a clear day, but it's it, out there in California. There's just uh, there's just a lot of extremes. And, and temperatures like you can kind of find your sweet spot the further you go north like if you're heading towards oregon you can kind of get to a, a a climate or an environment like we have here in indiana or in the midwest where you get you can get your four seasons to, but, yeah, to, to some extent too and, and i guess whenever whenever i first learned about uh you know especially from volney book one <clears throat> he did talk about temperatures and things but it, it's 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 it's, it's pretty temperate uh like, like you'd expect uh uh you'd expect you know really frigid temperatures but um it didn't really get uh you know, it's like uh, the average temperatures aren't really that cold um you know as to what i would i'm sure they're still cold as hell in a polyethylene a10 but uh you know <laughs> considering the region you know like you know like 30 to 45 degrees that's not really that bad and plus you know uh, uh <laughs> here in uh, you know the communist state of illinois we get uh, you know uh, it's some winters you know negative 10 negative 15 with a wind chill and things so uh, which I, I thought was was particularly interesting. Um, <clears throat> so I guess I, I guess another thing too, uh, you mentioned kind of it was uh, you kind of you know ruffling on private and public property. Like there could have been you know, uh, you might have been hard to distinguish where where you were at. But that's something that Ray recommended was if you know like there's a private property line and there's you know a public property abutting it, uh, you know you know park down you know right there. Uh, <laughs> if a private property owner comes comes and you know seat comes and finds you. Uh, you can say, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to be on public property. I'll move my camp over this way. And, uh, you know, if the forest bludge, as Rayo called them, forest bludgies, uh, they come and find you, it's like, oh, oh, wow, I, I just, I just, you know, mis, mis, misinterpreted the property line. I'll move over here on this guy's property. Uh, mm -hmm. This is where I was meaning to camp. So uh, I, I don't know if that had anything to do with the selection of the location or if it was just about terrain and, uh, and sunlight and things like that. But uh, that seems like a pretty good uh, strategy. Yeah, well... Yes, if you're going gorilla, and uh, from what I understand, a lot of marijuana is grown um, in Hawaii, uh, gorilla style, where and, and they have a, a, a technique where they try to keep the plants under, you know, a, like maybe two feet or or, or, or smaller. Uh, and there's, you know, if you're going gorilla gardening, yeah, that's a that's a that's a great idea. I mean, what what, what better than a, a public land to so go ahead and put it on? Oh Just God, don't. that's that's no, that's fan, <clears throat> that's fantastic too. And I'll go ahead and say this too. So I, I, I God, uh, sh uh, it's Patreon exclusive. We'll go ahead and say it. But uh, but yeah, two years back when I served on a jury, I got paid my like twenty bucks for three days or whatever because you know the government won't even pay their fucking minimum wage, uh, <laughs> for for three days. Um, yeah, I, I I I I figured what better way to spend that money than on what we're talking about right now. So. Um, <laughs> You know, like I, 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 I didn't really, I didn't really, you know, do it much at that time. But I was like, you know, I got this money from the state. What better way right. to spend it? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Just, just like with, uh, with kind of the, I guess the, the growing out there in, and, uh, in, in, you know, Oregon and in, in California. I mean, you know, what better place to grow that on than state property? Like, it's the biggest middle finger ever. Uh, right. And I absolutely love it. Yeah, well, like I said, in Hawaii, that's uh, uh, that's mainly how a lot of their 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 pot is supplied. But um, back to okay, so back to the 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 month on the mountain. Uh, I'll just take you, I'll just take you through like um, some of what the daily experiences are. Except for I'm gonna I'm gonna not include the drama. Uh, that that was the biggest turnoff. Was like I said, you get a 
Was it was it just a bunch of tweakers or like what what was it? Well, <laughs> what was they call, thankful, that caused all the drama. Well, thankfully for uh, my experience, I, as far as I know, nobody was tweaking. But I mean, when you're up on the, I mean, you get no cell phone signal. You you know you're out in the middle of nowhere with these people, and the whole goal is to get by. Well, make sure you have plenty of beer, and uh, you know just kind of get by and, and 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 eat. I mean, we didn't have electricity either, so. Um, we did have a generator for emergency purposes, but, uh, other than that, yeah, no cell phone, no electricity. Uh, there was some horses there, a lot of dogs, but mainly just hippies. Like, like when you get that, like I said, when you get that different, so many different personalities, especially like there was people from, uh, Oregon, there was people from Washington there. Uh, there was a lot of people from Indiana that, that, that I knew that, that was there. But uh, it it would have made it, uh, looking back on it, would have made it uh, an amazing reality TV show. <laughs> I mean, oh, I can think of so many titles. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah, it was it was nonstop, and all I could think about was like, man, if these people are so, and not the people I'm not putting down the people uh, that we were all staying and working together, but I'm talking about just the whole operation. I was like, if these people would just like put down the the drugs you know and, and and run a damn business i mean these guys could be super <laughs> super rich like i mean you're talking about uh, but i mean can, can you really can you really blame them i mean they've, they've got all the they've got all the weed they can smoke they're gonna make a lot of money regardless i mean and you're up there in the mountains in the siskiyou region i mean or or thereabouts siskiyou klamath whatever I mean, you're look you're looking at this. I mean, hell, I'd probably be do this, be doing the same thing. Although, you know, the way Liberty <laughs> Under Tax is going, I mean, it's no wonder that I can't run a fucking business. Uh, <clears throat> when you give things away for free, people don't uh, pay for things. As I've, as I've right. you know, started to find out, but for regardless, I mean, can you blame them? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, I guess if you have, you, I, you could be a total, you know, just a total fuck up and and still make uh, money uh, hand over fist. So. Uh, yeah, all I could think about was like, wow, I, I, how do these people do it every year? They, basically, they scrape it together at the last second every year on borrowed money. And then, I mean, they they mainly go out to Hawaii somewhere around January, February. And the, uh, Hawaii is just crawling with with growers that, that have cashed in on, you know, uh, the the previous month's uh, uh, harvest or whatever. So so they're, now they're basically out in Hawaii to live out there for about a month or two, blow all their money, and come back flat broke and do it all over again. And uh, <laughs> so they're not they're not going for financially independent early retirement. They're going for uh, you know uh, earn and splurge. Right. Yeah. It's it's all in. It's all in. So um, which I thought I thought that was wild. I mean there there's a lot more money that could be made in the black market because. When I, uh, I was talking to a lot of family and was talking about going out there, and they're like, "Oh, cool, medical." I'm like, "Yeah, um, sure, we'll, we'll go with <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah, fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good out there. It's all good." Um, they're gonna, you know, you know, Jeff Sessions is gonna listen to this conversation personally, but uh, God, I'd be honored. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> God. He'd fucking swat our houses just for talking about it, you know, something in the five years ago. Right. Do you smoke so. a reef for once? <laughs> not one, not even once. Not even. It reminds once. me of uh, it reminds me of that Family Guy episode, uh, where uh, <laughs> where it's like, yeah, something's been wrong with Meg, and and uh, Meg was just sitting there like you know, flattened like a pancake, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and it was like a pot commercial, like not even once. And Stewie's like, I'm getting a context high, and then he just. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. Get into it. Digressions. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So uh, back to the story. So um, I, maybe uh, I go into a little detail exactly what happens in the timeline, like um, when I got there, like the process and how it works. Go for it. Yeah, please do. Please do. And actually, uh, let me let me just ask this first. Okay. So, obviously, we've only got two patrons now. So, this isn't going to go out on TFR. Definitely not. There's a lot of, uh, you know, cussing I have to edit out. Um, but uh, podcast feed. Good for the podcast feed? 
Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Cool. All right, just checking. Go for it. Go as into I mean, as much detail we're, as you we're want. Talking, we're, we're talking about, this is a long time ago. Like, uh, I've, I've, I've given up all that, everything. Like, uh, uh, clean as a whistle. I go to work and, unfortunately, pay my taxes and start a gunpoint. But uh, this is a was a crazy time that that I had in my life. So good. Uh, I, I just I just wanted to double check. But uh, but yeah, go for it. You yeah, know, yeah. Tell, tell, I, us, tell us about it. We can go. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll keep I, going on this, man. I wouldn't I wouldn't be talking about the black market if I was still involved in the black market. That would just be stupid. Uh, you know, when I decided to become uh, open about um, you know my loathing of the government. Um, I made a few decisions in my life, and uh, yeah, the 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 whole the whole risk wasn't worth it. So uh, I mean, they could, I mean, they probably do have my phone tap, but they they can watch me now, and they're going to be totally bored. Well, um, it's, it's it's much <laughs> like uh, it's much like the tax protesters. It's like you you know who the first motherfuckers to get audited are going to be, right? Right. It's going to yeah, be it's, it's going to be you, the tax protester. So it's kind of similar there. It's uh, you're, you're talking about black market activity. Uh, well, you're still involved in black market activity. That just gives that just gives them a you know a, 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 it gives them a reason, I guess you could say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're they're, they're definitely gonna um, if you're being blatant. It just depends on how big of a fish you are and uh, how much time they got. It's, and if it's, it's called really it's called it. security culture. It's uh you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, most folks, you know, there there are some there are some folks that will and they do it for a purpose, but uh, you know, the large majority of folks, you know, smartly keep their illegal activity on the down low. But uh, well, let's get back into the story. Let's go for it. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to get into the processing. So the first, you know, few days I was there, you know, we're sitting there watching, you know, watering and, you know, I'm talking to him like uh, it, it, it was just like it's just like an unreal experience. Like because you feel like they're like people. I don't know. I just don't know how to explain it. Like you want to talk to them and just, you know, might be weird stuff. But OK, so points? yeah. Oh, gosh. They were gorgeous. How can you not look at the girls and say, "Hey, hey, ladies, you are absolutely." Can I stick my dick in you? <laughs> <laughs> you are looking beautiful today, um, but but uh, okay. So we're 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 doing watering uh, before harvest time comes. You're basically uh, watching the trichomes, and and, and you're watching the 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 little uh, you know white dust that's on the outside, and you're. You're you're looking you're looking at it through a magnifier and you're looking for those things to turn a brown. Just as soon as they turn brown on the tip from white, that stuff's ready to come down. So, uh, you know, we uh, we got a truck there and we're you know we're hacking off what as as they're turning that light brown on the end of those those little white crystals, hacking them down. First thing you do is you come up and uh, they call it big leafing, where you actually hang them in a tree. You, you draw up like a clothesline and you just start hanging the branches there. And uh, there's these big, you know, you, you know what your typical pot plant leaves look like. Right. And if, if, it, if anybody's interested, uh, the, 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 it was, uh, what was it, Blue Dream, and I believe the other one was called The Cheese. So, um, really, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm familiar so, with both of those. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you hang you hang them up on the on these you know um, like clotheslines and you're, you're you're picking out and this is when the the incident actually actually happened with the helicopter above us, so we're all out you know we got the tunes jamming and I, it just a wild the experience. Bob Marley blasting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, we were listening to a band called uh, Ten Foot Ganja Plant. Appropriate. And uh, yeah, but uh, so we're out there you know you you pull all the leaves off. And they call that big leafing or a big leaving. And uh, next, it's time to go inside. So, uh, well, into the house, or I don't know if you call it a house or a shed a shack. with windows. <laughs> yeah, a shack with windows. Uh, they go in there and they get hung. Um, they go in there and get hung, and they and, and they sit in that room. You want to keep the the temperature around um, 70 degrees, and you want to keep around 50 50 humidity. So they go in there and they hang for about five days, and um, after that they come down and they go into um, a brown paper sack, w into uh, a, a trash bag. It was pretty wild to see all this stuff hanging inside this little shack, but uh, I mean it was actually it was it was almost full wall to wall, and uh, 
so it, 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 it hangs there for five days. Then it comes down and it goes into a, a brown paper bag and those brown paper bags get put into a, a, a trash bag and they sit in there for a day or two. You kind of, you know, come around and, and check on them every once in a while and you just give them a little squeeze and you're looking for that right consistency. You don't want it to be too wet. So, so after it comes out, I'm drinking beer. I got, I got the burps. Cheers, Excuse man. Me. Cheers. So um, after it comes out of the bag, it's and now it's time for trimming time. So um, and and this is wild. So you get you get like the bottom of those uh, beer boxes. You know, like if you're getting like a, a a case of Tall Boys or something. Right. And they got yeah. And you you set that on your lap and you get your good you know expensive scissors out and you just start trimming away. And a lot of it. A lot of it looks like smokable stuff. You really want to get rid of all the visual signs of, of a leaf. And uh, so you, you, you trim that up, and, and, and there was people there that were like, you get this stuff that you get, your fingers get so resined up that you can just roll off these little black tarry balls. They call it finger hash <laughs> because your hands are so sticky right. with it. And... Uh, uh, there was people that would uh, would actually take, they would load up their tray, and they had a screen that they would set it on, and they would pick up that screen when it was loaded and shake it back and forth and collect all those crystals. Like, there was a guy out there that had a, 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 a freaking mason jar full of heat. <laughs> like, it was ridi- absolutely ridiculous. Like, like That dude knew what he was doing. Right, yeah. Of course, these are the veterans that that had had been out there for years, and and that's see, they, they, they don't even really care about the money. They just want to go get their years of smoke, you know, uh, <laughs> up there working. Yeah, yeah. They're uh, you know they can they're gonna pay people and keep you know, just like when you go have a beer, just sprinkle a little bit on the on the counter and say uh, that ought to take care of that. But uh, so which I thought I, I thought was kind of wild. It, it was my first time, actually my only time, because I, I I never did uh, I never did end up doing it again. You know, I I just kind of went out there for the experience. So, uh, yeah, trimming, keeping the key. Um, I actually had to leave early before the season was done uh, to come back to the real world, come back to Indiana, come back to my real job. But um, actually, for the for the for the month out there, uh, it paid you know around five grand or no, it was around four grand. So um, allegedly, um, <laughs> but you know it just depends on who you are and who you know out there. And a lot of those jobs, I don't know if anybody's listening, and they've always wanted to you know fly out there to California and find that. A lot of these jobs are going away because um, they've gone to these automatic machines, uh, and people are buying them and letting people rent them. But uh, what they do is they actually trim the pot without, um, yeah, without the people doing it for 200, 250 a pound. You really should be getting 250 a pound if you're if, if you got a decent gig out there. If you if you know anybody and know the right people, that I mean, that's what you should be getting paid. But uh, they they went to machines now and and, and the quality uh, has really suffered on the people that are tight and use the machines. I mean the old school people who are really you know providing the jobs for the kids out there flying out to California and look to do some uh, trimming business. You know, uh, you know they're still kicking out the quality stuff, but uh, you know a lot of these um, people with money realize the opportunity, and you know some people it, that train's probably pulled out a long time ago. But uh, and and you consider you consider too, you know, California with, I guess how lax they've gotten on marijuana, uh, it's it's probably cheaper now considering you know it's 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 obviously not uh, you know white market activity yet, but it's probably moved from black to gray market. So uh, yeah. the the profit that they're that they're looking to make is probably less, and therefore, uh, you know, as with you know normal businesses, the left fucking hates this, but uh, you know, going to you know machines, I mean, it's it's the most prof- profitable way to run a business. Uh, you know, in, in, in some respects, if there's like a fifteen dollar minimum wage or something like that, um, so it, it makes sense. So it's it's a little unfortunate, but uh, but at the same time, I mean, there's there's probably still opportunities there for folks that would want to do something like that. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's definitely opportunities. I mean, I, you know, just have some common sense about you and make sure you get, I mean, it's make sure you're going to, the guy's going to actually pay you or, or lady or whatever. Uh, you know, just try to make sure you get uh, hooked up with a good crowd. I, w- I would, some people just, you know, uh, they just go out there on a whim and, and you know, they're dedicated and they, they you know, they know it, they haven't been, you know, formally introduced to anybody, but they just go out there kind of, I guess with faith and, uh, they are able to, uh, um, they're able to get some of these jobs. So, right. So, so, so I guess, so I guess the question here for, and obviously Liberty under attack does not advocate anyone break the law. I mean, we, we, we don't want you to do that. Um, uh, but, uh, but at the same time, you know, there might be folks that are interested in this, you know, opportunities are opportunities, right? So, uh, if, if someone was interested in this and they had no connections, uh, I mean, what, what, uh, are you, do you have any knowledge on, you know, like what steps they should take? Uh, you know, to try to get hooked up with somebody. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people were just going there and putting themselves in. I mean, like when trim, when when trim season gets here, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people start hitting these towns, and and they're pretty open about looking for work. And if, if someone is needing work, uh, they're they're looking, so they're out there. I mean, it's it's. Kind of got to put yourself uh, out there first, and uh, and I'm not recommending that people do that, uh, like you mentioned sounds, before. Sounds like sounds like bad security culture, but it sounds like that's kind of the you got to got to go into these towns and talk to people and say, hey, you know anyone that's uh, you know growing, right. need help trimming, uh, right. you know, <laughs> one time we're getting off duty cop or uh, or some sort of uh, you know undercover FBI agent, that would be a bad deal. That would be a bad deal. So right. so I guess. <clears throat> So I guess before you do this, I would highly recommend you read Kyle Verdon's uh, anthology on security culture, just below the surface. It got a security culture. Uh, you can back, pick that up for free at LebanonAnderAttack.com, or if you want to pay for it, uh, why would you pay for it? But you can go to Amazon and just search for that title, just below the surface. It got a security culture. You can get it there uh, as well. Uh, but uh, I, I'd recommend you read that before you before you go pursue something like this. Uh, you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices on security culture. It sounds like. Uh, uh, sounds like it, it, it's similar to, you know, uh, uh, just just going around looking for a normal job. Like, hey, is it you hiring? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah, it sounds a little sounds a little odd, but I understand. You know, I, I mean, the it's the the employers and the employees are kind of doing the same thing. Kind of seems like that's necessary to get uh, to get connected to to network. So, uh, I guess there might have to be a sacrifice made in the security culture there. Yeah, and don't contact me because I don't know any of these people anymore. So. God, yeah, that would suck if you got an influx of messages. God. Yeah, this was like seven plus years ago, or however however long it is. This is a long time ago. You know, this this stuff is very fluid, and, and, and uh, <laughs> um, yeah, don't contact Jason about this. Please, guys. Yeah, yeah, please don't. Uh, but, and, and, and if you do decide to take these risks, don't come back on me saying, uh, well, I did what you told me, so. Um, Our, yeah, I yeah, already gave the disclaimer. We don't recommend you break the law, so. Okay. We don't recommend okay. you do any of that nonsense, and obviously we aren't responsible for any of your decisions. Uh, if you decide to do anything that we discuss today, it is uh, at your own accord, so uh, uh, and at your own risk. So it's always wise to put forth those those, those disclaimers, though. But yeah, go ahead, man. Right. Tell us some, tell us a yeah. little more. What what else you got? Okay, so they come down, they get trimmed, uh, and pretty much during like the the trimming process, I had I, ha- I had to leave. Um, I was working on. I still had uh, some stuff going on back home that I had to take care of, so uh, I didn't get to stay for the whole season. Uh, I didn't get to stay for the whole, uh, you know, the the whole making a ton of money and going out to Hawaii for a couple months and and, and blowing that money. Uh, I didn't get to stay for that part of it, but uh, it was it was an experience, you know. I mean, it, a lot of people don't get that opportunity, and uh, I felt pretty safe. You know, we were just talking about the. Uh, the risk or the dangers of uh, of just going out there on a whim, and uh, I actually had the opportunity to, uh, yeah, uh, work on a farm and live on a mountain for about a month. Yeah, yeah, and and, and obviously, I mean, kind of kind of that uh, that area. That's where Rayo chose to to pursue Vanu, and and there's a like I said before, there's a very good reason for that. Uh, and J- Jason uh, Booth last night was kind of saying that. You know, like for for the Siskiyou region and kind of even the Klamath region too, I would say, um, like he he said he would call them like uh, um, like limited coercion zones because there's not a lot of government there, there's no military bases, there's no uh, there's no very large cities, 
uh, there are cities around there, sure, but not uh, not your not your large cities where there'd be a bunch of bureaucracies and things. <clears throat> There's that area that that area alone uh, will will you know minimize the risk uh, versus you know say putting together some operation in a suburb like I think they did in Weeds. Uh, yeah, they did that in Weeds. Um, you know, putting together a growing operation there. Uh, or, or things that are that are that are easily tracked, especially uh, if, you're, if you're if you're uh, from what I've heard and from what I've seen on TV shows. I don't have any firsthand experience with this, but if you're growing it inside, you got to draw a lot of electricity for the lights and things. So that shows up on the utility bills. So as far as risk, uh, that area seems very very you know it, it seems it seems minimized versus other alternatives. So uh, I think that is is definitely you know a, a mark in the favor of that. But but still you know. Uh, there's there's risk to everything in life. Uh, there's risk to everything. So uh, for those that uh, you know would be uh, willing to take such a risk, uh, as minimal as it may be, uh, then you know it sounds like a really interesting opportunity. And um, hell, man, I, I I don't know. Anything else you got? I think you're muted, bud. Yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. Yeah, it's it's such a cool place uh, that 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 Rayo actually decided to stay in that area because it, it, it is pretty isolated, and they're they're you know you can you can you can skirt a lot of uh, you know uh, having interactions with different people, and uh, I'm pretty sure that you could probably set up a pretty good network out there because. I have a feeling that marijuana has been growing out in Northern California for a long time. It, it, no. Before, yeah, yeah. So, um, and and you know, uh, the whole the whole you know Vana or the whole Bonu uh, with Rayo is, uh, yeah, he was a, a smart ass pothead, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. We we talked about that last night too. I kind of you know did an offhand joke, but but yeah, apparently uh, yeah. One, one of the anecdotal examples that Brian Doherty provides. So this would be third person. Wouldn't even be, you know, this would be third person. Uh, you know, him reading someone else's experience and writing about it. Yeah, apparently, you know, Rayo, uh, you know, in one of his underground structures, you know, advised people out there, and uh, they got there, and, you know, he just rolled them up, rolled up a bunch of doobies, and, you know, they just, you know, got stoned in the underground bunker. I mean, you want to talk about, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> hotbox and something. I can't imagine what under underground structure would, uh, will, how, how that would work there. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, and, and Rayo talks about uh, you were kind of mentioning the uh, guerrilla gardening aspect. Rayo, Rayo, called, Rayo called it crypto culture, growing small, small plots of marijuana uh, out there in the Siskiyou forest. Uh, I'm, and I'm almost positive, like, if, if 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 that's true, and he really was that much of a pothead, he definitely did that. There's no way, and, oh, yeah. and as frugal as he was, he wasn't going to go pay top dollar for that stuff. No right. way. There's no way at all. He was growing. He, Speculation, but I'm gonna make a very firm, you know, conclusion here. He was growing marijuana out there in the Siskiyou forest. Oh yeah, I, I, I mean, it, yeah, he definitely brings it up in his book where he's where he's talking about growing pot. So I, uh, yeah, I don't think it's that far of a, a stretch to to imagining him uh, growing some pot up there in Northern California. I mean, it just seems it's just the place. I mean, like I said, it's. It's. it's a I, th hot I spot. think. I think Jason said the Siskiyou area was like 11 million acres or something. So the, the like the the ch the chances of getting discovered uh, are are you know very slim to begin with. So uh, you know and 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 you know, Jason Booth did also say that um, you know a, lar a large part of it is kind of you know it's it's you know no one's ever really gone you know to the deep forest. Uh, a lot of it's kind of unexplored. So uh, really really good possibilities for Vaughn or if you know you just want to go out there and you know participate in the black market uh, or the ethical enclaves as Ray would put it. Uh, then, then hell, I mean, I can't think of a better place to do it. I, I really can't. Yeah, yeah, the, the and um, yeah, the place is gorgeous up there. I, I was almost ready to to move out there a, a while ago, but uh, I don't know. It just, uh, I it's guess, a long way from yeah. Indiana. Yeah, it's a long way from Indiana, so <laughs> uh, it never ended up happening. You know, might have been a good thing, but you'll never know. You never know. Yeah. Uh, it just it was just it was just a, a, a wild experience so yeah i thought i'd share with share that with the listeners because you know i really don't give a shit because um it's not it's not what i'm involved in today uh a long time um, ago yeah I, i'm strictly gray markets now uh, <laughs> strictly strictly gray uh gray markets so yeah more more of the legal interstice variety and uh you know <clears throat> 
kind of like Bitcoin now, uh, you know, with kind of the recent China thing. Uh, you know, Bitcoin's kind of in a gray area now uh, uh, in, in some regards. So, uh, so yeah, you know, Jason, I'm really glad you, you shared that. I know we, we've talked about that before when we were camping. And I guess that's another thing, too. If you were to, you know, stay out there, we probably wouldn't have ever gotten in contact and, and uh, you know, might not be even having this discussion right now. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's obviously a positive. Uh, it's obviously a positive, but uh, I, I guess uh, yeah, you know, we we've talked about this before in private, you know, in the in the middle of the woods still, but uh, not uh, I'm sure not comparable to uh, the Siski region. But uh, but anyways, you got anything else uh, you want to leave listeners with, or you want to start wrapping up? Well, let's wrap it up, dude. All right. So uh, since this is going out on the podcast feed now, uh, since you know I decided this was too good of a conversation to you know keep to two list to two listeners on the Patreon feed. Uh, they're getting a little neglected, but, uh, you know, I, it's hard to put, you know, put a lot of effort into, you know, I, and, and it sounds bad, it sounds bad, but it, like, it should put out more, you know, content, content for Patreons only or patrons only. But at the same time, when there's only two of them, it's, it's it just doesn't seem like it's worth it. But I, I obviously certainly appreciate the, you know, the, um, the support from those that do uh, support us on Patreon. Hopefully you do. Uh, you know, finding a value in the content that even though there's not, uh, you know, extra content too often on the feed, uh, the Patreon feed, hopefully that's still uh, all right with you. But uh, anyways, still have Liberty Under Attack, you know, custom shirts, direct action over political crusading, $15 and sh uh, shipping is included in that. We accept crypto, crypto FRNs, uh, just go to libertyunderattack.com forward slash shirts and that shirts plural. <clears throat> got uh, We've got small, larges and extra larges available still. Uh, so definitely uh, go ahead and uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and pick up one of those. Is uh, don't have a whole lot of them left, so if you're considering getting one and even putting it off, uh, you might want to go ahead and do that uh, very very soon. So the website is libertyunderattack.com, and uh, I guess we'll we'll talk to you uh, you know next week. <laughs>